Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. The Boeing B-52 is one of the most iconic large-scale jets in history. Having served in the United States Air Force since the 1950s. However, despite its having served in every major U.S. conflict since the end of the Korean War. This long-range subsonic jet is set to remain in service until at least the 2050s. This extended service life is a testament to its robust design and adaptability. However, it also makes flying a B-52 a completely unique experience. I don't think anybody is quite ready for the noise that it's going to make on takeoff when you push up all eight engines and it just shudders and rumbles and you feel like the wings are probably going to fall off or just something's going to fall off the plane. You're just rehearsing everything in your head as you're going through the takeoff, so try not to miss anything. But it's such a cool experience and you can really feel how much power this thing has. Throughout the Cold War, which lasted from the 50s up until the 90s, the B-52 was considered the first response aircraft in the event of a global conflict. Despite its size and bulk, it became imperative that the Strato Fortress be able to get up in the air as quickly as possible. This led to the development and implementation of the scramble takeoff procedure. This procedure is crucial during heightened military tensions or in the event of a surprise attack. The B-52 crews are typically on high alert during periods of increased tension. This means they are typically already suited up, allowing them to be ready to go with very little notice. Scramble crews often spend their days poring over mission charts and maps, performing practice drills, and inspecting their equipment. The aircraft are also maintained in a state of readiness, with engines off but ready for immediate startup. Normally, warming up the B-52's eight Pratt & Whitney turbofan engines can take up to an hour. In the event of a scramble, this would translate into a response time that is too slow. Therefore, B-52 engineers have developed what's known as a cart start. The biggest thing we're doing today is just showcasing uh, deterrence to uh, any adversaries or even our allies, basically reassuring them. Part of our mission is we can't always show exactly what we do realistically just because of the destruction we do cause. Uh, so this is just one way for us to showcase our deterrence capability basically at the MITO takeoff. Upon receiving a scramble order, the crews rush to their assigned aircraft. Once in position, they must board the aircraft immediately and start prepping for takeoff. Meanwhile, 
ground crews will set up the cart start system, which utilizes a cartridge, essentially a small rocket motor, to provide the necessary power to start one or more engines simultaneously. When ignited, the cartridge generates a high-pressure gas, rapidly spooling up the engines to a self-sustaining speed. This bypasses the usual slower process of engine startup that involves using the aircraft's onboard auxiliary power unit and getting the engines ready for takeoff in a matter of seconds. Many first-timers are often surprised to see how little the B-52's cockpit has changed since the plane's introduction in 1955. For instance, many of the instruments and avionics still incorporate analog controls. This is a holdover from when such systems were the standard. Upgrading to digital systems would require extensive redesign and testing, which is both costly and time-consuming. Meanwhile, these systems have proven to be reliable over decades of service. Also, I can add those OAPs. The other benefit of using these older analog systems is that they are generally more resilient to electromagnetic interference, including nuclear electromagnetic pulses, or EMP. In the strategic role of a bomber like the B-52, this resilience is crucial for mission success in various scenarios, including nuclear conflict. Because of their bulk and subsonic airspeed, B-52s are often subject to threats from newer, faster aircraft. This means Stratofortress crews need all the advantages they can get. One such event occurred in August of 2020, when two Russian Su-27 pilots intercepted a U.S. Air Force B-52 bomber conducting routine operations in the Black Sea. Despite the bomber being in international airspace, the Russian pilots decided to attempt to intimidate the B-52, flying within 100 feet of its nose several times while also using their afterburners to generate turbulence around the aircraft. This is also the reason why B-52s and other such bombers are often escorted by smaller, faster, and more maneuverable fighters like the F-15. These fighters generally provide close support to bombers during missions. This can include clearing a path through enemy defense and engaging in air-to-air -air combat to defend the bombers. anything to ensure the larger can reach their targets and return safely. Bombers are not the only military aircraft subject to scrambling. However, as fighters are generally intended to function as mid-air interceptors, they are normally scrambled for defense operations. especially in response to potential airspace incursions or threats.
Pilots and other crew members will be kept on standby, or QRA, which stands for Quick Reaction Alert. This means they must be ready to respond at a moment's notice. For that reason, they are usually at or near the airbase with their gear prepared, while the jets themselves are kept ready for immediate takeoff. The McDonnell Douglas F-15 Eagle was introduced in 1972, which was still during the height of the Cold War. As such, it was built with quick reaction times in mind. The single-seater fighters are powered by two Pratt & Whitney F100 PW220 afterburning turbofans, which can push it to speeds of over 1,600 miles per hour. It also has an amazing rate of climb, more than 67,000 feet per minute. This means that once it's in the air, it can intercept potential threats and neutralize them much faster than even some newer fighters. The F-15 has remained equipped with state-of-the-art avionics and radar systems throughout its career. These enable it to detect, track, and engage enemy aircraft at long ranges ensuring quick reaction and added situational awareness during a scramble. When it comes to pilot preparation, the only real way to train for a real-life scramble scenario is to practice scrambles repeatedly. Such scramble drills are practiced regularly at air bases all around the world. They generally involve pilots being on high alert and then suddenly called to their aircraft to take off as quickly as possible. The aim is to minimize the time from the scramble alert to being airborne and make the concept of rushing to an aircraft and immediately getting into the air feel almost routine. Some air forces will even hold scramble competitions where pilots and ground crews compete against one another to see who can execute the fastest emergency takeoff. Often, one country will compete against another during special cooperative training operations, such as Exercise Eager Tiger, which pitted the U.S. against the Royal Jordanian Marine Corps. Though the rewards may vary, what matters most is that each team gets a chance to see how other countries maximize their time and efficiency. Scrambling drills are just a smaller component of what most Air Forces refer to as readiness exercises. These are training events designed to test and improve the overall preparedness and effectiveness of personnel, equipment, and procedures. In many cases, the militaries seek to ensure that pilots, ground crews, 
Radar personnel, and even commanders are proficient in their roles and responsibilities. To do this, they will simulate entire fake battles. More recent aircraft, such as the F-35 Lightning II, have been designed with scrambling capabilities in mind. Unlike the B-52, these planes are designed to get into the fight faster than ever before. However, they are still subject to the speed of the crew members, who most often undergo strict drills. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.